In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. In, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. In, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, Reign on earth. Fiat. Book of Heaven, Volume 19, Part 5. April 16th, 1926. How, in order to live in the divine will, it takes full abandonment in the arms of the Celestial Father. How the nothing must surrender its life to the all. How the Celestial Mama is the true image of the living in the divine will. I was feeling so very little and incapable of doing anything and I called my Queen Mama to my help, so that together we might love, adore, glorify my highest and only good, for all, and in the name of all. In the meantime, I found myself within an immensity of light, and all abandoned in the arms of my Celestial Father. Even more, so identified with him, as though forming one single thing with him, in such a way that I no longer felt my own life, but that of God. But who can say what I experienced and did? And then afterwards my sweet Jesus came out from within my interior and told me, My daughter, Everything you experienced, your full abandonment in the arms of our Celestial Father, no longer feeling your own life, is the image of the living in my will. In fact, in order to live in it, the creature must live more of God than of herself. Even more, the nothing must give life to the all to be able to do everything and to have her act at the top of all the other acts of each creature. Such was the life of my divine mamma. She was the true image of the living in my will. Her living in it was so perfect that she did nothing but receive from God, continuously, all that she was to do in order to live in the supreme volition. So she received the act of supreme adoration to be able to place herself 
at the top of every adoration that all creatures were obliged to do for their creator. In fact, true adoration has life within the three divine persons, our perfect concord, our reciprocal love, our one will form the most profound and perfect adoration within the sacrosanct trinity. Therefore, if the creature adores me, but her will is not in accord with me, it is vain word, not adoration. So my mamma took everything from us to be able to diffuse herself in everything and to place herself at the top of every act of creature, at the top of every love, of every step, of every word, of every thought, at the top of every created thing. She placed her prime act upon all things, and this gave her the right of queen of all and of everything. And she surpassed in sanctity, in love, in grace, all the saints who have been and shall be, as well as all angels united together. The Creator poured himself upon her, giving her so much love that she possessed enough love to be able to love him for all. He communicated to her the highest concord and the one will of the three divine persons in such a way that she was able to adore for all in a divine manner and to make up for all the duties of creatures. Had it not been so, it would not be a truth, but just a manner of speaking, that the celestial mamma surpassed everyone in sanctity and in love. But whenever we speak, it is facts, not words. Therefore, we found everything in her, and having found everything and every one, we gave her everything, constituting her queen and mother of her very creator. Now, daughter of my supreme will, the one who wants everything must enclose everything and place herself at the top of the acts of all as prime act. So the soul must be at the top of every love, adoration, glory of each creature. My will is everything. This is why the mission of the Sovereign Queen and yours can be called one, and you must follow, step by step, the way she conducted herself with God, to be able to receive the divine attitude, in order to have within yourself a love that says love for all, an adoration that adores for all, a glory that diffuses throughout all created things. You must be our echo, the echo of our celestial mamma, because she alone lived perfectly and fully in the supreme volition. Therefore, she can be your guide and act as your teacher. Ah, if you knew with how much love I am around you, with how much jealousy I watch over you, so that your living in my eternal will may not be interrupted. You must know that I am doing more with you than with my very celestial mamma, because she did not have your needs, nor any tendencies or passions, 
that might even slightly prevent the course of my will in her. With greatest ease, the Creator would pour into her, and she into him. My will was always triumphant in her, and therefore she had no need of either spurs or admonitions. With you, on the other hand, I must use more attentions. When I see that some little passion, some little tendency, wants to arise within you, and also when your human will would want to have some act of its own life within you, I must admonish you. The power of my will must remain in the act of knocking down whatever arises within you that does not belong to it. And my grace and my love must flow into that rot that the human will keeps forming, or, with anticipated graces, prevent the rot from forming in your soul. This because I love so much the soul in whom my will reigns, and in whom the supreme fiat has its field of divine action, the only purpose of all creation, and of redemption itself. And she costs me so much that I love her, and she costs me more than all creation and of redemption itself. In fact, the creation was the beginning of our work toward the creatures. The redemption was the means, and the fiat shall be the end. And when works are accomplished, they are loved more, and they acquire their complete value. Until a work is accomplished, there is always something to do, to work on, to suffer. Nor can one calculate its right value. But when it is accomplished, all that is left is to possess and to enjoy the work done. And its complete value comes to complete the glory of the one who has formed it. Therefore, creation and redemption must be enclosed in the supreme fiat. Do you see, then, how much you cost me? and how drawn I am to loving you. The fiat, operating and triumphant in the creature, is the greatest thing for us, because the glory that was established by us to be received through creation is given back to us. And our purpose, our rights, acquire their full power. This is the reason for my attentions, all for you, for my manifestations to you, and for my love for all creation and redemption, all centralized in you. Because in you, I want to see the triumph of my will. April 18th, 1926, The Divine Will, Symbolized by the Wind The Divine Will is the depository of the divine works, and it must also be the depository of the works of creatures. I felt all shrunken within myself, and I tried to fuse myself in the Holy Divine Will, to run along with it, so as to keep it company in its works, and to requite it, at least with my little I love you. Now while I was doing this, my sweet Jesus, coming out from within my interior, told me, My daughter Courage, do not pay attention to your littleness. 
What you must care about is to keep your littleness in my will, because by being in it, you shall be dissolved in it, and my will, like wind, shall bring the freshness it possesses into your act as refreshment for all creatures. It shall bring a warm wind to inflame them with my love. It shall bring a cold wind to extinguish the fire of their passions. And finally, it shall bring a humid wind to produce the vegetation of the seed of my will. Have you ever experienced the effects of the wind? How it can turn the air almost instantly from warm into cold, from humid into a most fresh and refrigerating air? My will is more than wind, and your acts in it, by agitating it, move the winds it contains and produce admirable effects. Then all these winds, united together, invest the divine throne and bring to their creator the glory of his will operating in the creature. Oh, if everyone knew what it means to operate in the supreme fiat and the prodigies it contains, they would all compete to operate in it. See, our will is so great that we ourselves make it the depository of our works. In our will, we deposited the creation that it might remain ever beautiful, fresh, whole, new, just as we issued it from our creative hands. In our will, we deposited the redemption that it might be always in the act of redeeming. And my birth, my life, my passion, and death might be always in the act of being born, of living, of suffering, and of dying for the creature. In fact, our will alone has the virtue and the power to maintain the work done always in act and to reproduce that good as many times as one wants. Our works would not be safe if they were not deposited in our will. If it is so with our works, much more so should it be with the works of the creatures. To how many dangers are they not subject when they are not deposited in our will? How many changes do they not undergo? Therefore, all our contentment is when we see that the creature makes the deposit of her acts in the supreme volition. These acts, though small, and also the trifles of the creature, compete with our acts, and we delight in seeing her industriousness that in order to place her trifles in safety, she deposits them in our will. Now, if our will was the depository of creation and of redemption, it must also keep the deposit of the fiat on earth as it is in heaven. Here is the reason for my pushing so that you may do nothing without depositing it in it. If you do not form this deposit of all of yourself, of your little acts, and even of your trifles, not having its full triumph over you, my fiat shall not be able to carry out its fiat on earth as it is in heaven. April 25th, 1926 Currents and waves of love among God, the creation, and the soul who lives in the divine will. How the fiat is triumphant in heaven and conquering on earth. 
I am going through most bitter days because of the privations of my sweet Jesus. I feel I am breathing a poisonous air that is enough to give me not one death, but a thousand deaths. But as I am about to succumb under the mortal blow, I feel the vital and balsamic air of the supreme volition that serves me as counterpoison so as not to let me die. And it keeps me alive that I may suffer continuous deaths under the incalculable weight of the privation of my highest and only good. O oh, privation of my Jesus, how painful you are. You are the true martyrdom of my poor soul. O oh, supreme will, how strong and powerful you are. By giving me life, you prevent my flight toward the celestial fatherland to find he whom I so much long for and desire. Oh, please, have pity on my hard exile. Pity on me, who live without he who alone can give me life. But while I was feeling crushed under the weight of his privation, my lovable Jesus moved in my interior and fixed his gaze on me. At his compassionate gaze, I felt restored from death to life. And since I was doing my usual acts in his supreme volition, he said to me, My daughter, while you were impressing your I love you in my will upon all created things, all creation felt the love of its creator being doubled. And since created things do not have reason, that love flowed with impetus toward he who had created them. And the celestial father, in seeing the love that he issued in creation, being doubled by the little newborn of his will, so as not to be surpassed in love, redoubles his love and makes it flow over all created things to follow the same course that his little daughter has followed. Then he centralizes all this love in the one who sent him his love doubled, and with paternal tenderness he awaits the new surprise that his newborn would double his love again. Oh, if you knew the currents and the waves of love that come and go from earth to heaven and from heaven to earth, how all the things of creation, though in their mute language and without intellect, feel this doubled love of he who created them and of she for whom they were created. And they all assume the attitude of smile, of feast, and of letting flow, benevolent, their effects toward creatures. The living in my will moves everything, invests everything, and fulfills the work of the Creator in the creation. The fiat on earth as it is in heaven has a prodigy, a note more harmonious, a characteristic more beautiful that it does not enjoy and possess even in heaven. In fact, in heaven it possesses the prodigy of a fiat of absolute triumph that no one can resist. And all the enjoyment in the celestial regions comes from the supreme fiat. But here, in exile... In the depth of the soul, it contains the prodigy of a conquering fiat and of new conquests. While in heaven, there are not new conquests, because everything belongs to it. 
in the pilgrim soul, my fiat is not absolute, but wants the soul with it in its own work. And so it delights in manifesting itself, in commanding, and even in praying her to operate with it. And when the soul surrenders and lets herself be invested by the supreme fiat, such harmonious notes are formed, produced on both sides, that the Creator himself feels cheered by his own divine notes coming from the creature. These notes do not exist in heaven, because heaven is not a dwelling of works, but of enjoyments. Therefore my fiat on earth has the beautiful characteristic of impressing its own divine operating within the soul and of making her the repeater of its works. So, in heaven, my fiat is triumphant, and no one in the celestial regions can say, Here I have done a work to prove my love, my sacrifice, to the supreme fiat. Here on earth it is conquering, and if one likes the throne, much more does one like new conquests. Indeed, what would my fiat not do in order to conquer one soul, to make her operate in its volition? How much has it not done, and does it not do for you? Then afterwards my sweet Jesus made himself seem crucified, and he was suffering very much. I did not know what to do to relieve him. I felt annihilated by the privations suffered. And Jesus, unnailing himself from the cross, threw himself into my arms, telling me, Help me to placate divine justice, for it wants to strike the creatures. A strong earthquake could be felt such as to cause the destruction of towns. I was left frightened. Jesus disappeared, and I found myself inside myself. April 28, 1926 The creation and the celestial mama are the most perfect examples of the living in the divine will. How the Virgin surpassed everyone in suffering. I was thinking to myself, when my sweet Jesus speaks of his will, he often unites with it the sovereign queen of heaven or the creation. He seems to delight so much in speaking of both one and the other that he keeps looking for opportunities, pretexts, and devices in order to manifest what his most holy will does, both in the celestial mama and in the creation. Now, while I was thinking of this, my lovable Jesus moved in my interior, and all tenderness squeezed me to himself and told me, My daughter, if I do so, I have strong reasons. You must know that only in the creation and in my celestial mama has my will remained ever intact and has kept its field of action free. Therefore, having to call you to live in my will as one of them, I had to propose them to you as examples, as an image for you to imitate. So, in order to be able to do great things, in such a way that all may perceive that good, unless they did not want to. The first thing is that my will must act wholly in the soul. Look at creation, how my will is whole in it. And because it is whole, creation remains always in its place 
and contains the fullness of that good with which it was created. This is why it remains always new, noble, pure, fresh, and can share the good it possesses with all. But the beautiful thing is that while it gives itself to all, it loses nothing and remains always the same, just as it was created by God. What has the sun lost by giving so much light and heat to the earth? Nothing. What have the azure heavens lost by remaining extended in the atmosphere, or the earth by producing so many and so various plants? Nothing. And so with all the things created by me, Oh, in what an admirable way does creation sing that saying about me. He is ever old and ever new. So my will in creation is center of life, is fullness of good, is order and harmony. It keeps all things in the place wanted by it. Where can you find a more beautiful example a more perfect image of the living in my will, if not in creation. This is why I call you to live in the midst of created things as their sister, that you may learn to live in the supreme volition, and you too may remain in the place wanted by me, to be able to enclose within yourself the fullness of good that my will wants to enclose in you, so that whoever wants it may take of that good. And since you are endowed with reason, you must surpass them all, and requite your Creator in love and glory for each created thing, as if they were all endowed with reason. So you shall be the substitutor for all creation, and creation shall be a mirror for you in which you can reflect yourself in order to copy the living in my will so that you may not move from your place. It shall be your guide and teacher, giving you the highest and most perfect lessons in the living in my will. But the one who surpasses all is my celestial mamma. She is the new heaven, the most refulgent sun, the brightest moon, the most flowery earth. She encloses everything, everything within herself. If each created thing encloses the fullness of its own good received by God, my mamma encloses all goods together, because since she is endowed with reason and my will lived wholly in her, the fullness of grace, of light, of sanctity, grew in every instant. Every act she did were suns and stars that my will formed in her. So she surpassed the whole creation, and my will, whole and permanent in her, did the greatest thing and impetrated the longed-for Redeemer. This is why my mamma is queen in the midst of creation, because she surpassed everything, and my will found in her the nourishment of her reason that made it live as whole and permanent in her. There was highest accord. They held each other's hand. There was not one fiber of her heart, or word, or thought, over which my will did not possess its life. And what can a divine will not do? It can do everything. There is no power it lacks, or thing it cannot do. 
Therefore, it can be said that my mamma did everything, and everything that all others together could not do, nor shall be able to do, she did by herself. Therefore, do not be surprised if I point out to you the creation and the sovereign queen, because I must point out to you the most perfect examples in which my will has perennial life, and has never found an obstacle to its field of divine action, in order to be able to operate things worthy of itself. My daughter, if you want my supreme fiat to reign as it does in heaven, that is the greatest thing that is left for us to do for the human generations. Let my will have the place of sovereign in you and live as whole and permanent. Do not be concerned about anything else, be it your incapacity or the circumstances or the new things that may arise around you. Because... As my will reigns in you, they shall serve as raw material and nourishment so that my fiat may have its fulfillment. Afterwards, I was thinking to myself, it is true that my queen mamma made the greatest of sacrifices that no one else has made. That is not even wanting to know her own will, but only that of God. And through this she embraced all sorrows, all pains, up to the heroism of sacrifice, sacrificing her own son in order to do the supreme will. But once she made this sacrifice, everything she suffered afterwards was the effect of her first act. Nor did she have to struggle as we do in different circumstances, in unforeseen encounters, in unexpected losses. It is a constant struggle to the point of making our hearts bleed for fear that we might surrender to our own belligerent human wills. how much attention one must have so that the supreme will may always keep its place of honor and its supremacy over everything. And many times this struggle is harsher than the pain itself. But while I was thinking of this, my lovable Jesus moved in my interior, telling me, My daughter, you are wrong. The maximum sacrifice of my mamma was not only one, but they were so great and so many, for as many as were the sorrows, the pains, the circumstances, and the encounters to which her existence and mine were exposed. Pains were always doubled in her, because my pains were hers more than her own pains. Besides, my wisdom did not change direction with my mamma. In each pain she was to receive, I always asked her whether she wanted to accept it, in order to hear that fiat being repeated to me in each pain, in each circumstance, and even in each heartbeat of hers. That fiat resounded so sweet, gentle, and harmonious to me that I wanted to hear it being repeated in every instant of her life. This is why I would always ask her, Mama, do you want to do this? Do you want to suffer this pain? And my fiat would bring her the seas of the goods it contains and would make her understand the intensity of the pain she was accepting. This understanding 
through divine light, of that which, step by step, she was to suffer, gave her such martyrdom as to infinitely surpass the struggle that creatures suffer. In fact, since the seed of sin was missing in her, the seed of the struggle was missing, and so my will had to find another device that she might not be inferior to the other creatures in suffering, because having to acquire by justice the right of Queen of Sorrows, she was to surpass in suffering all creatures together. How many times have you yourself not experienced this, that while you felt no struggle within you, as my will would make you understand the pains it inflicted upon you, you would remain petrified by the intensity of the pain. And while you were undone in that pain, you were the tiny little lamb in my arms, ready to accept yet more pains to which my will would want you to be submitted. Ah, did you not suffer more than in the struggle itself? The struggle is a sign of vehement passions, while my will, if it brings suffering, gives intrepidness. And with the knowledge of the intensity of the pain, it gives one such merit that only a divine will can give. Therefore, just as I act with you, that in everything I want from you, first I ask you whether you want it, whether you accept it. So I did with my mamma. This, so that the sacrifice may be always new and may give me the opportunity to converse with the creature, to be with her, and my volition may have its field of divine action in the human will. Now, as I was writing what is written above, I could not continue on, because my mind was estranged from my senses by a beautiful and harmonious chant, accompanied by a sound never before heard. This chant called the attention of everyone and harmonized with the whole of creation and with the celestial fatherland. I write all this to obey. As I was hearing that chant, my Jesus told me, My daughter, hear how beautiful it is. This sound and chant is a new canticle formed by the angels as homage, glory, and honor to the union of the divine will with your human will. The joy of all heaven and of all creation is so great that unable to contain it, they play and sing. After he said this, I found myself inside myself. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 19, Part 5. Fiat. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.